Honey, turn off the light. Has this ever happened to you? Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever had to do the incredibly complex task of turning off a light before? Well, have I got something that's gonna completely revolutionize your world. Introducing the clapper. Okay, yeah, the advertising for this thing is pretty hilarious, and you can tell how old it is just by the style of the ad, but jokes aside, this thing is a pretty cool invention. I'm sure most of you have probably heard at least a little about it before, but if you've never heard of the clapper, it's a very early home automation device. Home automation has become extremely accessible to almost anyone today. There's all sorts of devices out there that have smart home capabilities, like thermostats, refrigerators, security cameras, doorbells, lights, even microwaves waves now. Most of these can be controlled from your phone or by a virtual assistant like Alexa or Siri, but if you were living in the 1980s and wanted to spice up your home a little bit, the clapper would be a very easy way to do it. Yeah, this is a product of the year 1984, so instead of picking up that newfangled Macintosh or IBM PC Jr., why not head over to your local Jordan Marsh and pick one of these up? The clapper was invented by Carlisle Stevens and Dale Reamer, and sold by a company called Joseph Enterprises, who has also marketed the Chia Pet here in the US since the late 70s. It works by detecting claps to turn on and off things that are plugged into it. But believe it or not, even in the age of Echoes and HomePods, the clapper is still produced and sold today. You can pick one up at Amazon starting at $19.99. I'll have a link down below. You can also find them at certain retail stores. I picked up this one at Walgreens. But you can get a pack of smart plugs that can turn a regular wall outlet into one that can be controlled from your phone or voice assistant for less than that. So I wanted to find out if this 37-year-old piece of home automation tech, whose functionality has essentially remained the same all these years, is still worth it in 2021. Does the if it ain't broke, don't fix it philosophy apply to this thing? Or has it been rendered completely obsolete by modern technology? Let's find out, shall we? The first thing I noticed when I picked up the clapper is how light the package is. It weighs in at just over six ounces. It's not surprising though, as the box just contains the clapper itself inside of a plastic container and a little bit of documentation. And although the box proudly declares the clapper as the original home automation and the simple device that started it all, it actually was not the very first piece of home automation tech. The X10 home automation standard was developed nine years prior in the mid-1970s and was used in all sorts of devices. Later iterations could even be controlled via a computer running MS-DOS. Yeah, this is literally the Amazon Echo of the 1980s. LGR has a great video covering this if you want to go check it out. But that's not to say the clapper wasn't successful. Even though it was a simpler form of home automation, it was widely popularized because of its advertising. There were all sorts of ads created for this thing, and some of the newer ones still air on TV today. So here it is in all of its glory. It's definitely been slimmed down over the years. The original model was larger than a wall plate and had the two outlets on the bottom. So how does this thing work? Well, it's pretty simple. You've got two outlets, each one activated by a different number of claps. The top one is toggled after two claps and the bottom one after three. This is indicated by the Roman numerals next to the outlets themselves. The lights underneath are used to indicate when the clapper detects claps. Below that is the microphone, and on the very bottom there's a little switch you can use to change the sensitivity. There's also the away mode, which will push power through the clapper whenever any noise is detected, as demonstrated in this extremely accurate advertising. The clapper resets to help protect your home. Leave your appliances plugged into the clapper, and your lights will go on. Justice served. But jokes aside, this can be pretty useful, especially since it automatically turns your devices off after a few minutes. So yes, it could be used to trick unwanted house guests into thinking that you're actually home when you might be away on vacation. So I plugged my bedside lamp into the clapper and, well, clapped twice. Now there is a noticeable delay before the light turns on. This is how the clapper checks for a third clap. If there isn't one, it will pass power through to whatever is plugged into the top outlet. If it does detect a third clap, the third light will come on and power will be passed to the bottom outlet, though there will still be a delay. And you can't clap too quickly, that usually won't activate it. I found that having a half a second to a second delay between claps will yield the best results, but even then there are times where it just won't activate. 
Now, I know what you're thinking. If this thing uses a microphone to detect claps, couldn't it be triggered accidentally by something else? And you'd be right. The clapper has been known to activate when it hears things like a door knock, a dog barking, certain sounds from televisions, even a cough can trigger it sometimes. You can even snap your fingers to trigger it if you're up close enough to the microphone. So I decided to put it to the test. There we go. You can see it's getting picked up. I mean, I don't really think anybody's gonna knock like this slow. You usually would be like, you know. So you can see it's getting picked up, but it's just not registering it as a clap. Now let's try to slam the door. It's not going to be two separate, like, claps like that. Now, did you notice the third light came on there? At first, it may look like the clapper picked up a third clap, but it actually was rejecting my second clap as background noise. It normally does this by illuminating the first and third lights on the bottom, but because the second light was already on, it just lit up all three. So the acoustics of the room that you have the clapper in is obviously going to affect its performance. The manual explains how this works, and it also describes the proper pattern you should use when you intend to activate the clapper, which is about half a second in between claps. The rejection indicator is also important when it comes to the away mode, because when it's in this mode, just about any noise that the clapper picks up will cause whatever is plugged into both outlets to temporarily receive power. They'll stay on for about 10 minutes, and then the clapper will turn them off. And yeah, that's how the thing works. You can plug practically anything into the clapper. Anything that doesn't use more than 200 watts of electricity, that is. You also won't be able to use anything that has a grounded power plug. A lamp is a perfect example of something that the clapper was designed to work with. I would venture to say that lighting was one of the most common uses for the clapper. It's showcased in nearly every one of the TV ads. And I'm willing to bet that most people who bought one wanted to use it with a lamp by their front door or bedside. So that, if you come home late at night, you just clap twice when you walk in the door for a light to turn on. Or maybe you're the guy at the beginning of the video who forgot to turn the light off before getting into bed. And you can still use lamps with the clapper just fine. A simple lamp has two states, on and off. Flick the switch once to turn it on, flick it again to turn it off. So to use it with the clapper, flick it to the on state, plug it in, and clap twice. The lamp itself remains in the on position, obviously, but because the clapper determines whether power is passed through to the device or not, it isn't on. It's just like if you were to unplug a power cord from the wall and plug it back in. But when you try to use the clapper with a modern television, for example, you'll run into some problems. Though older TVs, like the ones seen in the old ads, will work just fine, modern TVs with a standby mode will be hit or miss. Standby mode is usually indicated by a little light on the front of the TV. Even though it isn't on, it's still drawing power. There's a chance that using the clapper with your TV will just make it turn on in standby mode, even if you have it fully on when you clap to turn it off. You can test this by turning your TV on and unplugging it from the wall, then plug it back in. If the TV comes back on completely, it's clapper compatible, but if it comes back on in standby mode, you're out of luck. In my case, I have one television that works fine with the clapper and one that doesn't. Now, it's not like this behavior is unique to the clapper. You'll experience the same thing with a modern smart plug. It's just that the clapper used to be advertised as being able to control your TV, and that isn't necessarily true anymore. If somebody wanted to make the argument that the clapper is obsolete today, this is a very compelling reason. Oh, but at least you can use a GameCube with it. That certainly makes up for it. That's worth $20 to me. I mean, there's no way this could get any better. Now, Bob Ross talking clapper. Yeah, so is there a limit to how many you can buy? The Bob Ross clapper.
Easily the best use of Bob Ross's image, or maybe that's the Bob Ross Chia pet. Yeah, this is something that Joseph Enterprises does fairly often, partner with other companies and brands to create special versions of both the Clapper and the Chia pet. There are tons of special edition Chia pets based on movies, TV shows, even public figures, and emojis. I mean, at least they have something for everybody. The Clapper doesn't have nearly as many versions, there's only four branded ones on the site here, but yes, I picked up this special edition Clapper that features a caricature of Bob Ross along with one of his paintings. But that's not all. Painting does nothing else. It should make you happy. Yeah, this thing is a talking nightlight. Clap three times to turn it on and hear Bob Ross's voice. There's also a very fitting quote when you turn it off. So if you ever wanted to hear Bob Ross's voice at the clap of a hand, this thing is for you. And yes, you can still buy it on Amazon today, link down below. It's $10 more than the regular clapper, and while you are getting the Bob Ross DLC, you'll lose the ability to plug two things into it. This is because three claps activates the nightlight. Wait, why would you ever want to silence Bob Ross? Get this out of my face. Okay, if you really want to, you can turn off the Bob Ross quotes using this switch on the side, but I'd recommend repenting immediately, it is in the Ten Commandments. So overall, is the clapper still worth it in today's interconnected world? For most people, I'd have to say probably not. If you're looking for a way to turn a standard wall outlet into a smart plug, there are far better solutions out there, and many of them cost less than the clapper does, with way more functionality, like the ability to control the outlet right from your phone and not having to worry about it being triggered accidentally by the sound of your TV or a knock on the door. That's not to say there isn't a use case for it, though. If you look on Amazon, there's already seven pages of reviews written in 2021, and we're only two months in. This is way more than I would have expected for a piece of home automation tech that hasn't really changed since 1984. Now, not all of these reviews are positive. In fact, many complain about the false triggers and delay before the clapper activates. You'll also see the phrase gag gift used a lot. That's something that the clapper has been called pretty frequently, even all the way back to 2003, when a newspaper article called it a useless toy, saying that its innate absurdity has turned it into a gag gift. But the clapper still presents itself as a serious piece of home automation tech. And for some people, it certainly can be. If all you want to do is have a lamp turn on when you clap twice as you walk through the door, this can do that for you. Though it definitely has its drawbacks, and as mentioned before, there are more modern solutions out there today. But obviously, they wouldn't still be selling the thing if they were losing money every year. So if you were ever curious about what home automation was like in the year 1984, be sure to check out today's video sponsor, I'm just kidding. Though hey, Joseph Enterprises, I will absolutely accept a sponsorship from you if you're interested. That's all for today's video. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give it a like and get subscribed. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.